Hi everybody, this is the last kind of quick tutorial just about tables and chairs. I've got a few examples of chairs here which I'm really not going to get into and I'm going to show you two different ways of making tables because I hope by now after all the different methods we've used you can actually look at something like a table or a chair and figure it out. So the chairs for example, here's one that works pretty well. Uh, this is from 3D Warehouse but if you look at this you can kind of look at it in profile just the way we did the bench, right? So I started disassembling this one. We've got a leg assembly right here, which you can do. Create uh, an elevation. Draw these surfaces. Extrude them. You could even draw this as one piece. That would be fine. Uh, you can see the 3D here, but if you draw each of these rectangles, just like we did with the 2x4s and this one here, you can pull those across. I don't care if you have this kind of joint detail. You don't need that. You could get rid of that and just show this butting up against here and here. That's fine. <coughs> so again, all you need to do is really define that cross section for the seat. Have a path like I have here. Pull. Use the follow me tool to pull those across. You can draw one of these here at the angle and then use the move copy and snap it. You don't even have to need you have to keep gaps in this because it's tighter. You can just, uh, you know, there probably would be gaps in here in reality, but if you want to assemble it like this, that's just fine. And this is just adding the different supports. These two by fours need, or two by threes need something to support them underneath, right? If they just butt up against here, uh, they'll fall down if they don't have a horizontal member to support them. So use, if you want to download some chairs from 3D Warehouse and use them as examples, you can, but uh, I look at 3D Warehouse a lot too, so please don't just take one and make it yours. You can take it and build it from scratch. Once you create one chair, you make it a component, and you're done. You can put four of them around the table and finish it. Here's a little more elaborate one, still kind of basic uh, folding chair style. Again, you could build this piece here, copy that up. It's pretty much the same. This is a little longer on the back, so then you could come in here and stretch this, copy a couple more of these, make it a unique component, and pull it up. So if you, mo if you model this base, copy that to create the back. You've got a kind of V-shaped support with a connecting horizontal member. I hope you can look at that and start breaking it down. That's what you need to do, whether you're using SketchUp or Rhino or 3D Studio. If you model something, you need to be able to look at it and say, okay, how do I break this down into the basic geometry? What components repeat? Legs, armrest, this side, same as that side, just inversed. Uh, so if you make this into a group, you can copy it and then use the scale and scale it through itself to create a mirror image. Snap it back over here and you're done. So one assembly, the seat is a second assembly, copy it, make it unique, extend that a little bit, and then you've got a couple horizontal members, so you're really only assembling about three, three components to that to make that chair. If you want something like this, you can start with a rectangular surface, create that a line along there, draw that with arcs over to here, offset it, you could even make this 90 degree instead of an arc on here. We really, but if you figured this out, if you think about this, you could create a, a box that encompasses this chair. You can draw a line. Well, this curve is a little different, but you can draw a line that comes through here and connect it and use the follow me tool to pull a circle around to create that shape. So I'm not going to demonstrate all those because I think that's something you need to start thinking about. But the chairs don't have to be super complicated. If you can make something like this, it's very similar to the deck. It'll be easy, and you can use that. Seat height, about one and a half feet, one foot six inches. Back height, you can adjust that maybe a little bit more than, uh, than that. I'm not going to be too picky about the dimensions. The table, hmm, what did I do to this? I thought I had this ready to go, so let's see what I got. Okay, see if I can make a face out of that. Okay, I must have deleted something. It looks like down here. Okay, there we go. This should look familiar to you. I created a five foot circle on the ground plane. Then I started from the center. I drew out to create this kind of angle. Most of these kind of umbrella tables have a weighted base so they won't blow over in the wind. 
half the diameter. That's an inch. The diameter is two inches. I went vertical, came out, and snapped to the edge down here to create the tabletop itself. Went up a little higher, created a half cross section of the umbrella to the center point, and closed that in. So once I have that, then I just need to use the same follow me tool, move over this, click, alt key, drop down on the circle, and it will just rotate that around. Now the disadvantage of this is this is all one element, right? So I don't, I can select this down here and give it a different color. I can select this and give it a different color and this down here, which is fine. You just have to think about that. If you want to build that in more of, a, of an assembly process, you can start here. Let's do a little offset. So maybe I give myself that same kind of base there. And I offset that. Now, if you like the space, grab the uh, offset tool, get the inner circle, pull that in to a smaller one, select that, use the move tool. And remember that trick I mentioned today in class. You can click on this. Start moving up, tap the Alt key. That allows me to kind of pull that up in the blue axis. You're snapping to the surface. Just tilt a little bit. Make sure you have that. If I want to separate these, I can click that, double click on this, make it a group. Open it up, push pull. Maybe I'll snap it to the same height there. Okay, so I've got my column in there that I've started to work with since I've got all these lines. I can triple click on that, right click, soft and smooth, right? And co planner, move this over a little bit. Now I've got a nice smooth post there. Then I can go back to my original circle here. Even if it's got a hole in it, that's okay. I will make that a group. I'm going to move that up. Mm, let's see. Maybe 30, either, well, let's make it three feet. That might be a little high, but we'll make it three feet. Enter that group. Just pick the line tool and come in here and snap the two endpoints. And now I've got that closed in, so delete that. That really wasn't very efficient, was it? So probably what I should do is delete that. Double click, shift click that, delete that out of there. Now I can use the push pull tool to pull that up. Yeah, a couple inches, that's good. Got the table created. Same thickness as the other side. Now you notice that I don't have this base here, so if I wanted to do that, I think I could use a little trick here also. I mean, I could come in here, draw a line across here, delete that line. Use the push pull tool, and in this case, instead of well, in this case, I can just stretch it down. So I'll pull, you know, an inch and a half down there, and then to if I was splitting us putting this on the ground plane or deck, I just have to move it back up an inch and a half. But that gives me the thickness that I want. Now the top, I could use. I'm gonna grab this. Uh, it looks like I also maybe smooth that off a bit too much, right? So I'm gonna do this and. Drop it down below 90 degrees so I don't have that surface. Now I can get my polygon tool. Hopefully that will allow me to snap to the center. But it isn't. So if it isn't, no problem. I will just draw a point across. Go back to that. Find the midpoint of that. Start moving out on the red axis, hold the shift key down, and then snap it right to here. So that gives me more of a hexagon shape instead of the circular shape that's over here. And of course, being the careful modeler that I am, I am going to select that and make a group out of that. <clears throat> and now I want to make this a little more umbrella looking. So I will take this tool, click here, click here, and just bend that in to get the little bit of a arc on it. Not too much. So 
select that, use my, uh, not that, my rotate tool, snap there, click, click, tap, control, there, and one, two, three, four, five. So I will do five times, and I've got that repeated around there. Get the eraser tool, get rid of these outside edges. This isn't absolutely necessary, just creates a little bit more of a nice shape on it. Push pull, <clears throat> again, up inch and a half maybe. Then I use my old trick that we used on the gazebo, just start drawing lines across. I'm inside the group, so I know these are connecting. I can see because they're all thin. Rotate this up and switch to the move tool. Click, tap the alt key, pull that up. And I've got a nice umbrella table. And since all these things are all separate components, I can color them, apply different materials. This one isn't, but I can select around that, make it a group. And if I was going to reuse this umbrella table, yeah, it might be a little high. So what do I do about that? Well, let's select around here. And let's move that straight down. Get the blue, shift. Maybe that looks better. And since I don't want this sticking out, I'll just select that. Same thing, move. Actually, going to move it up, hold the shift key, drop it back down. Just tuck it in there so it's a little odd. And if you don't want this bottom one here, get inside there, select it, delete it. And I have that. Uh, Ooh, sorry, tilted that off. So let's get back in there and just select that, do move. Get the blue, I'm moving up to get it and then pulling it down. Okay, it really wants to snap to this. So I'm gonna pull it all the way down. All right, in order to do this now, I'm gonna take the next step. It's, it's trying to snap to this because I have this solid. I'll leave that there, open this up, now delete this side, and then come back into this one. Select the top. I could use the push-pull tool for this too. Uh, it would work just as easy. Might actually work easier because it's gonna be locked into the vertical. Hold the shift key down. Maybe we should try the push-pull tool because it keeps wanting to snap to that. So let's try it. Open up the group, push-pull. There we go. I guess that was more efficient. I don't care if it doesn't connect, you won't see up in there exactly. Then you can use your brush to click on every other one and you can start adding that so that looks a little different a little more detailed than the other one but either method can work okay you can modify this as well start cutting these angles off if you wanted to it's a little more work to do that <clears throat> so my preferred method would probably be the second one but either one's acceptable okay so there's a couple different ways to make an umbrella table then you take your chairs and you arrange them so you can see here, based on this chair, that's a pretty high table. You're going to be resting your chin on top of that. So maybe 30 inches might be better instead of 36 or even a little less. Once you get this table, once you get the chairs, if this seems a little high, then you can always move that down to appropriate height. Move this over. And I don't know if we talked about this yet or not, but once you use the move tool, if you have a grouped object and you move over the sides, you can see these little pluses. They actually allow you to rotate things. So you could move this in, hold one of those, and then repeat that around so you can locate the chairs next to it. The table still looks a little high, right? So get that in there. Use the move. Maybe something like that. I don't know what size these chairs are. I just pulled them in a 3D warehouse. The table seems a little low now, but uh, anyway, make it fit the chair so it seems appropriate. 
If you want to add some people in, that's fine, but it's not a requirement of this project. It will be on the next one. Okay, so that's a couple different ways to make tables, umbrella table and chairs. And I can always pick this and move this down. So my, yeah, that's maybe went high enough so nobody bangs their head on it. And it appears that using the push-pull tool will be a little more effective for this. There we go. And we've got that straightened out. If you're doing this too and you're going to show what's really going to take some different views from different angles, probably want to go in and color the inside of this to match the outside so it's consistent in case you get that in view somewhere. All right, hopefully that will help you finish up uh, M2A1. And uh, on Wednesday we'll start working on M2A2.